And welcome back to the channel everybody. Welcome back to another video and yes, we have officially moved and are living in utter shambles. A complete and total disaster, but we did get the TV installed. The other TV did not fit. Uh, what a nightmare. Who wants a TV? We'll make it a great deal. We got a ways to go, but I thought I'd show you all the backyard because this is the coolest part of the entire house. Even though it's small, even though it's not big, we have this incredible built-in barbecue and bar area and the golf course. And a bunch of guys golfing. So I'll be a little bit quiet as not to interrupt them. Well, they're being loud, so I'll be loud. So anyways, there's the fire pit <laughs> right there, directly connected to the gas. No more propane tanks, no more propane accessories. Propane and propane accessories. And built-in lights and a uh, cool area to, to go run away from coyotes and stuff. So pretty cool down there. And a uh, beautiful balcony upstairs from the master bedroom. Look how big that thing is would go up there, but wife's up there and not in the mood for me to walk in with a camera. Huge balcony, incredible view, and this paradise. So it's coming along. It'll be another few weeks before we are completely settled in, but let's have a conversation. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. We'll do a whole house tour later on, but what a few weeks it has been moving, to say the least, this has been insane. Oh, I do gotta show you one thing, which I think I can show you here real quick when we go outside. Look at this mess. And there is the staircase and what will be my office here. And look what's great about this. I can fit one more of those. So which one should I get? Comment below. Let me know which one of these stand-up video games I should add to my office. That's going to be awesome. And a cool little studio that we'll get put in there. And... I want to be a little private, so I'm going to point the camera down because I don't want to have any more interesting visitors like we had at the last house. And this is the front door entry. Even though we had DoorDash show up thinking that that was the door entry. That's hilarious. Gorgeous garage door. Looks like wood, but it's not wood. But I do have to show you what we got done which was the new Land Rover Defender made to look just like the old Land Rover Defender and wrapped in hot pink. This is KPF Momentum Pink and SoCal Auto Salon or SoCal Tint, also known as SCT Motorsports. Does an amazing wrap job here in Southern California. So if you need a wrap, you need to go to them. They are outstanding. And I cannot begin to tell you how complicated this beast is to wrap. And they did it did it perfectly so now let's go jump in the challenger and have a conversation all right let's get started so this is a follow-up to my two videos ago where my video when I called Napleton's about a King Daytona advertised with a sale price and a discount at 98750 and the phone person the phone rep as well as the uh, the, I don't know if it was a manager or a salesperson, doubled down and completely supported their decision to take bids on that car and ultimately, finally, two-thirds of the way through the call, acknowledges and discloses that there's a $100,000 markup on that car. And I wanted to address this with you all because there were some comments where I believe dealers or salespeople did not like that video. Obviously, that they didn't like that video. It was exposing the shady games that they play. But there was some comments where people felt that maybe it was just a mistake. And that mistake now has cost their reputation or hurt them. How could it be a mistake when I got a message from my subscriber a week before telling me he was upset because he called them, gave them a piece of his mind because they played the same game with him when he tried to buy that car for 98750 I waited a week to even address it to see if maybe it was a mistake and they fixed it. I did my research, saw that the car was on the market, according to car gurus, for 277 days, and it shows the price was lowered. So at that point, there's no, no one in the planet that wouldn't think that these folks are selling one at MSRP with a discount. The market has slid so far that it's not 
out of the realm of extreme possibility right now, based on all the news articles out there, that this car would be 98750. So I decided to call and I disclosed that I was recording and they went ahead and hurled themselves under a bus by saying that they want to take bids and they want, ultimately I got it out of them, 100K over. So my issue is one, it wasn't a mistake. In 277 days, a mistake would have been figured out. Would have been, I mean, I get that these folks aren't the brightest candles burning and, and frankly their sales meetings gotta be just a bunch of people bumping into walls for them to do stupid things like this all the time. But uh, even these incredibly smooth-brained individuals in, my brain. in 277 days, with inquiries galore, I'm sure, would have had to have caught on that we, we made a mistake, we priced it wrong. We need to price it at 198000 They didn't. They were doing this it seemed clearly to try to get people into the sales funnel, to try to get bids on that car, to create energy around that car, to get a ridiculous price for it. Yet, in 277 days, they haven't been able to get close enough to any offer that they would accept to sell that car. Now, after my video and everybody else doing videos from TK to Butter to Zach and Ray and Zach and go watch all their videos, they're incredible, lots of additional information and surprising information that now they change the price to MSRP but it's still misleading even though manufacturers suggested retail price is not the actual price and disclaimers I guess give them an out to not be accused of false advertising I still disagree with that because if you know for a fact that you are not taking MSRP or anywhere close to MSRP why not just price the car at the price you want? And that's my issue. Charge your markups, put the prices up front of your websites. It's your car, it's your thing that you can sell for whatever you wanna sell it for. And if there's a buyer willing to buy it that's just as dumb as you, then they get together and boom, you sell a King Daytona for $200,000. And and you know, who am I to stand in between two smooth-brained individuals who want to just throw money at each other? I, I, I'm not, I'm not, having any issue with that. I don't like it, I don't like the deceptive tactics, I don't like all the games that dealers play and go watch my eight uh, traps that dealers do to get your money, but my big issue is just price it at the price you want for the car. Then I can hate you, I can dislike you for that, I can put you know screenshots on Instagram and say look at these dummies want 200,000 for a, for a King Daytona, but at least you don't end up with this kind of viral video uh, mayhem taking place at the expense of your dealership and to still be advertising it for and I believe it's still being advertised although I did hear from TK that they said they're saying the car is sold so maybe it's off the website it just seems ridiculous that these guys wouldn't just every dealer out there message to all of you dealers is you know in your sales meetings when you're all sitting around playing with with uh, you know Legos or tiddlywinks or whatever you all do in there when you talk to each other and I don't know get your you know hands stuck in coconuts and you, for hours and you can't get them out. The monkeys are greedy. The monkey sticks his little hand inside the coconut to try to pull the fruit out but can't get it out and then the monkey gets captured. All that monkey had to do was open his hand, let go of the fruit, and it would have been free. But his greed blinds him. His attachment to the prize is so strong that he sacrifices his life for it. I mean, for whatever whatever you guys are doing in these meetings, maybe somebody, or maybe you all can put your IQs together and realize that 277 days on the market is, is the market screaming out that you're asking too much money for the car or you're doing something wrong. You're doing it wrong. And that maybe you should price that car accurately online and at a lower price than what you've been telling people over the phone you want to get. I know that sounds crazy and I know that's something you're not used to, but it seems a little more honorable, a little more honest, and a little more transparent than putting it up for a really low price and then telling people that it's a really high price. That's my issue. That's my biggest issue with this whole nightmare that these dealers are playing with us. 
just price it. And if you say that, well, it's auto, some folks were saying it's auto populated. When the car shows up, it's auto populated on the website. There's nothing they can do. Baloney. I used to write HTML coding back in the day, back in the 90s. I mean, I was an Apple app developer. I built an app from scratch and got it approved and got it up on the App Store, got it on Google Play, and it was not a great app and it's not there anymore, but I got it there. So I understand technology enough to know that you could change that website. You can put the actual price. It's funny how they find all the different columns, different areas, lines below the MSRP price to add discounts and, and rebates and all that other stuff and random stuff too sometimes, but they can't add in a little asterisk that says market adjustment 100,000 or put a banner across it that says this car will be going to auction on X date or this car we're accepting bids on this car call to make your bid today anything that would have at least kept so many people from calling and feeling misled that's all that's the issue charge what you want to charge for your car you could sit on that car for 277 days I think it's crappy but you can do that and I, I, you know, I may not like you for it, but there's nothing I could do to you for it. And I also get, and I want to address this last thing, and I'm going to be done, is everybody who says, yeah, but Brad, you know, if they price that car at 98750 it's going to sell in a day, it's going to sell in a minute to a flipper, and the flipper's just going to turn around and flip it. So they have to charge markups. Otherwise, these cars just get traded all over the place. No, I don't agree with this. Here's how I feel about this, is at the very least, if they sell it to somebody for a price lower than what it could be sold on the open market, which there's no need for them to have to do that, they can charge a markup. They just have to advertise it properly. But let's say they did sell it for sticker and a flipper got a hold of it. You wanna know what flippers do? And this is funny, I'm defending these guys, but they advertise the car at a price they want or they put it on eBay, or they send it to an auction. So everyone knows the rules, When it, at least when it gets in the hands of a, of a flipper, there's, there's clarity on price. There isn't the misleading crap. And at least the, the car flipper doesn't have a $20 million two-story beautiful car dealership on three acres of land with conference rooms and donuts and well-trained salespeople who lie out of every side of their mouth and orifice of their body, at least it's just one dude trying to make some money and he throws it up on eBay and the highest bidder gets it. At least it's transparent. When the car goes on cars and bids and the car gets bid up or bring a trailer and the car ends up going for a price that everybody understood the rules. I have no problem with that. So price the cars whatever you want to if you want to price out the flippers, but be transparent on your websites. Be transparent in all of your advertising. That's all I'm saying. And I hope that's clear. And I hope these dealers, like these folks at Napleton's, can get their brain cells all together and just realize that when a car's sitting for almost a year, you're asking too much. That's it. Real simple. So put it at a price you're willing to take and let people make the offers. Or put it at a price you'd like to get something close to it and take offers. If you were asking 135 or 150 for that King Daytona, you might get offers for 130, 120, 125. You might from people who wanna buy it and put it up there. 150, make your offer today. But just be upfront and honest about it. So I hope that makes sense, everybody. And go check out my last two videos. If you didn't see the recording, it's very interesting. And for those of you who think I was too tough on either of those people, stop being snowflakes, stop being wimps. I was not tough. You haven't seen tough yet. I mean, you want to see tough, I mean, go leave your house one day. The world's a very tough place. I was respectful. I was to the point. I got a little irritated and frustrated when she was doing the... the the dance with me because I just wanted her to realize she's not a salesperson like she told me she was. I knew she wasn't. And send me to someone who can make a decision, can have a conversation. And that's it. So go check out that video though. But if your feelings were hurt by that video, man, don't leave your house. The world's a tough place. I am not a tough guy when it comes to that phone call for sure. 
So with that, everybody, I hope you enjoy these videos and stay strong out there. Don't fall for the dealer's crap. And we're going to keep doing these videos as long as these dealers keep playing these games. They stop playing the games. We stop doing the videos. Everybody goes back to their corners and we start buying and selling cars and having a good time with each other and with our cars. Pretty simple. Sounds like a good plan to me because the way it's looking right now, whatever the hell Dodge is going to announce next month with these new cars, whatever the hell they announce, it doesn't matter because the dealers are going to screw it up. The first batch that comes to the lots are going to be marked up to the moon and then they're going to find out if it's electric that nobody wants them and then they're going to hold out for the money because they're greedy and then they're going to have sales meetings where they sit around and play with baby toys and stare at the ceiling and then sit on the lot way too long until finally finally they need to sell the cars or they go bankrupt i guess all right i'm done i'm done thank you for watching like subscribe share this video with anyone you think it could help thanks for blowing up my video my second to last video and i will see you in the next one everybody take care bye bye gotta go unpack